Welcome to Barcelona. We spent one week docked at the Real Club Maritime de Barcelona, and apart from the times when we were hanging laundry all over our boat as if it were ornaments on a Christmas tree, and the times Aladino spent fixing everything that needed fixing, we felt like rich people. One of my best friends that I've known since I was five years old There's flew in from Canada for a week in Barcelona. Responsible captain. <laughs> aye, aye. There are two parts to this story. The first part, which you're going to see in this video, is about all of the things which Aladino did to make sure our boat was in top working condition. Sometimes when you're at a dock with electricity and fresh water and a solid pontoon right next to the boat where you can keep all of your tools, it's a lot easier to do some work rather than when you're at anchor with none of the above mentioned amenities. The second part of this story, which you'll see in the next episode from us, is all about enjoying Barcelona and living at the Yacht Club. Welcome to Barcelona. It was not a rough crossing, but still, um, I don't sleep very well on passages. So I was really tired when we came in, but then uh, we slept for three hours, slowly feeling more energetic. I really like the harbor here, by the way. We'll show you guys around a little more in a bit. But first I came up with, there's actually quite a big list of things uh, you do when you just arrive into the harbor. You rinse the boat down with fresh water and you get rid of the trash which accumulates. Then uh, fresh water, refill the boat with fresh water. Laundry, like whenever you can and come to a harbor. I like doing laundry since things accumulate also. Yeah, ventilating the boat, cleaning the galley when you were trying to cook on a passage, um, go for groceries, so all of that really adds up. That's just the basics. And additionally to that, I was actually making a list of what I could work on for the boat. I'm actually surprised, um, like it's nothing new amongst sailors, the list always grows and things to do on a boat, it always becomes more. So you better keep on it to cross a few out because uh, the new ones come quickly. For me right now, I will have to repair the dinghy again. When we towed it onto the beach, uh, we must have uh, got onto some sharp shells or glass, I don't know. There's a few little cuts. Um, there is a oil change for the engine. Check the cooling liquid, just very basic stuff. Um, I'll also have to check if there's a ship chandler in Barcelona. Those are uh, stores with nautical equipment. Since I crushed our position light, I will need a new position light. Um, maybe a bracket for my autopilot since the solution that I mounted, I'm not very pleased with it. It works, but it's not very nice. Yeah, just thought I'd share that with you and more to come. Dinghy is next. After the second coat, I use my torch, it's basically a heat gun. Use a heat gun to reactivate the glue before you put the patch on.
the next thing I wanted to do is replace the topping lift with a decent halyard. I would like to use the topping lift as a, the main halyard in an emergency if the other one fails. So I thought of replacing it yeah, with something more adequate and I'll show you how I'm doing this. I decided to take this one from Leros instead. I use this brand a lot. And now I will sew this end onto this end with needle and thread to make sure I don't lose them somewhere in the mast because afterwards when I pull on it, it will go through here, inside the mast, all the way to the top and then back to where I want it on the boom. Now I can get rid of this old mess that I had here. Old, pretty useless. And now I'll connect my nice new halyard. That looks much better if you ask me. Now I'm doing some anchor chain maintenance. It's time for the very basic oil check. Let's see how it's doing. This has been one lovely engine. Super reliable, works perfectly. Brand new three-cylinder Yanmar. And I have outfitted it with a Balmar regulator. The ones of you following from the States, you might be, you might know this brand. I am really happy with it. It's a 100 amp output alternator, so that's pretty much maximum you can get out of this engine without changing the whole pulley kit. And it's been doing a great job. Yeah, I got it hooked up with its regulator. The ARS5, which is right here, so that shows you the voltage on the display, uh, measures the temperature, and well, gives the batteries the perfect charge it needs. So, here I have a Victron Energy battery monitor, and it shows the auxiliary battery is at 13.4 and main battery at 13.6. So, very happy with that. So back to the oil check. I grab one or two paper towels and there's my oil measuring dipstick, I believe you call it. Take it out the first time without even looking at it. Clean it. Put it back in. see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. 
and you see that on camera yeah there we go so there's two holes and pretty much in between is a good indicator so it's getting it's getting a bit blackish by now so here you see the two holes and it was just in the middle so the amount I'm happy with the amount all good still and in about a week we will be uh, back in France in Port Saint Louis and there I will do the oil change before we leave the boat over winter so a proper winterizing Hi, here I am in the Marina of Barcelona and I just had an awesome lunch at the Marina. They have a restaurant and it's really affordable prices and good starter, first, second, dessert for about 12 euros. So a bit full, had a coffee too, so I'm energized and Maya is visiting the museums because um, but yeah, she's visiting museums and I take the chance to work on the boat a little bit. That's my passion. So I just went to the ship chandler, bought a few things and I'll show you a bit of what I'm doing. Five liters of oil, but I will not do this today because I don't have a pump with me. And then since I broke the two nav lights on the bow, so now I took one where both are incorporated. So one side's green for starboard, while this one, one is red for port. So I'll install this later. This is finally the original bracket to connect the autopilot to our tiller. Since if you remember, it was this one so far, which did its job, but this one here is a much sturdier more appropriate piece so that's how this should look and it will be mounted with two screws underneath the tiller and this pin is attached at the very front and that's how it will be connected to the autopilot it's a much sturdier stronger yeah a little comparison but this worked for a month, two months. Not very proud of it. <laughs> and also I bought a little connector because um, the electric autopilot requires electricity and we just had a flying connection so far. Also something improvised, so now I bought this. Cable one side from the autopilot and one side from the boat and let me take it apart so i didn't want to buy one that is um like there is the plugs that are attached somewhere screwed onto the boat and then just the other part is flying where you always connect it but then this part always sticks out somewhere and you might hit it and i just thought i just want the flying connection so that seemed like a good solution to me so i'll install this later And also I have a few varnishing jobs, um, there is a few scratches and dents to do here and there, so I'll do that too. Mix a little bit of epoxy as well for to fill out some cracks, that happens with wood sometimes, it cracks, so you fill it out again, glue it together, varnish if required, that's pretty much my day.